Hi everybody. Hello, hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, I'm Akshay. I am um fan of Sanjay Singh, as a lot of you may know Sanjay Singh. Um, but I am also uh, trying to be an AI consultant with the industry. And um, part of the job of an AI consultant is working with companies to suggest them um, implementations on their operations so that you can make their workflow better. So what you do as architects, we are hoping to integrate AI into that to make your workflow as architects better, therefore making you better architects is what we want to do. I am currently studying at UCLA, which is uh, the University of California, Los Angeles. I am studying artificial intelligence and computer science. Um, and I'm led by all the other as well. Hello, everybody. My name is Rindusi Agawar, and I'm currently studying at IIAD. I'm a second year student, and I'm studying computer architecture as well. And I'm trying to find a balance between design and AI. Awesome. Um, all right. So, where this all started was two weeks ago. We here in the we came to the office, talked to a few people in the office about what ARCOP does and how we can make those operations better. And so we'll be focusing on that. Plus, we'll give you a little bit of overview about everything um, related to AI so that you also understand along the way. Okay. So today's overview is going to be, first, we're going to introduce a few things about AI. Um, then we're going to talk about the three big problems that we figured in the last meeting. One of them was document processing. AI is very good at processing documents. Um, it's a branch called NLP, if you heard, natural language processing. And uh, Chat GPT is an NLP based software. A lot of you might know Chat GPT, that's why I bring it up. Um, next is generative AI. Generative AI is basically anything that converts text to image, text to video, um, anything that generates um, any visuals through artificial intelligence. Specific to architecture, it's really important because a lot of big companies in the industry are using generative AI to make their systems more efficient. So we talk about that. Finally, um, we had a close look at a lot of presentations that ARCO has. A big problem that a lot of people in ARCO told us was that we want to impress our clients using AI. Uh, AI use the man, clients to impress the man. We want to make our presentation better because that is how you go from pitching your product to the client to winning that competition and so getting that product. So that's going to be the third part of this. And along the way, we're going to tell you a little bit of prompting as well. Prompting is basically how can you talk to an artificial intelligence system to get less out of it. Prompting is not only important in architecture, but it's important from now on in all of your lives holistically, just because AI is here and it's here to stay. And the people who will know how to talk to artificial intelligence are the ones who are going to lead the industry. One uh, special thing to notice throughout the presentation so that you guys get an idea of um, different animations, different transitions in the presentation, we've actually added some of them into this. So that you can get like a hands-on visual of what it looks like. And so first we're gonna give an introduction, give an updated recap of whatever we talked about last time. It's a little lighter, but as you can see, there's a 3D model rotating on the uh, bottom right. 
this is just a simple model, but anything that is 3D at our top is well, say a building, it can also be put in the corner and it can go. I also added an animation to it that every time I click on it, it bounces like that. There are different animations available as well. This is just one point about how you can make um, like presentations better. And then as I tap it, it goes on to do that. But first, why should we use AI? I want to talk a little bit about why AI. There's a lot of points, but some of them is it's faster, it's more efficient, it's data driven, it removes, removes human error, it impresses clients, and you can see all the rest of them there. A very important point about AI is that um, AI cannot do what you do better than you. It can complement you doing what you do by implementing the certain things in a faster and more efficient way. Just to show of hand, how many of you have used ChatGPT? For the rest of you who haven't used ChatGPT, I hope after this presentation you start using it. It's probably the biggest discovery of this year. I'm going to say that. Um, and so after all of this, it obviously makes you a modern architect in today's increasingly um, growing world of technology. Um, a lot of reports have shown that within the next 10 years, in the field of architecture, 40 to 50% of the stuff that you guys do today is going to be replaced by AI. This is not to scare you that AI is going to replace you, but it is to tell you that, let's say we give an example of using a calculator. You can obviously do the calculator to do your calculations faster. You can do it on your mind as well. But you can't say that the calculator is going to do, going to input numbers in itself, it's going to do all the calculations by itself. What I mean to say is that you can use AI to make yourself better. AI can't do everything on its own. But you, by using an AI, you can use a calculator instead of doing it in your head, which is much better. All right. Um, so, just to talk a little bit about what we discussed last time, um, there were a lot of problems with documents. Let's say we have tender IR, it's 150 page tender. Obviously, you can't grasp everything in that tender absolutely perfect. It is going to be human error, obviously. But by giving an AI such as Chat GPT the, the entire tender and asking it to analyze that tender, you can actually proofread through the tender. You can make it do a lot of things. You can sort of have an interactive conversation with Chat GPT, which I will show you later on as we get into documentation. Then AI in design. We talked about how, let's say that I have a photo of this wall right here. And the client wants me to, or even let's say that your boss wants you to change this wall's color into something different. Instead of going back into your office and making so many changes, how can you instantly write text to an AI which can do that wall, which can add a picture here, which can add the color, make the color different? These are simple things. But AI in today's world can also change entire perspectives of buildings. And we will show you that as well. Finally, how to make complex presentations within PowerPoint itself. Very easy point, but it can uplift how you make presentations. Okay. And just a disclaimer before we get into this, these things. Um, this is just the start. AI just came in, it disrupted the industry seven months ago, literally. So most apps are in beta version, which means that it's not going to be perfect. But it's definitely going to help you. Second, AI has a learning curve. Like at any software, you learn all the time, you learn SketchUp, AI also has a learning curve. But as you get started on it, you learn wrongly, you can definitely expect to get better. AI is the biggest way to have it. Um, keep iterating, try new instructions because we've got to talk to AI. Bar -bar jitta, uske work karoge, utna wo aapko better out Finally, AI complements your ability. Like I said, a calculator can't do its own calculations. It can only help you derive approximates or derive templates. And if you have brainstorming and ideation, then you can also work on it yourself. Um, so without for yeah, last thing, if you want to be updated in the world of AI, which I would definitely recommend in architecture, there's a lot of AI architecture newsletters online. Just try to subscribe to those. But this is just a side point, of course. So, first point is document processing. And um, 
and all of these animations that I'm using, the previous one, let's say you have a building and you've got to highlight some of the specific ones. Abhi, like I saw in the presentations, kya hota, that there's two slides. One of them has the unhighlighted portion, uh, unhighlighted portion, the other one has the highlighted portion. You just want to talk about that. But with an animation like these, you can sort of play around um, just small ways to make it. First of all, chat feed. Obviously, now it's a video. So, let's make a connection with this software and give me output. So, it's combining the power of both of them. And that's what we want to use to understand how we can make it. Without anything, we're going to choose that. Okay. Otherwise, it can be longer than expected, but good things take time. All right. So this is how chat GPT looks. What most of you use right now is this chat GPT, which is called chat GPT 3.5. What I am asking you to do is use chat GPT 4, which is, let's say, 100 times smarter than chat GPT 3.5. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, Let's say that, oh, and before starting, let me show you what a plugin is. So there is a certain button here. You can go to the plugin store. AI PDF is what we're gonna use to understand PDFs better, but there are different types of plugins. If I want, I can sort of have a travel advisor on chat GPT with me, interacting with me. And there's a bunch of other applicants. You can you can make Excel sheets, you can make images, you can make presentations, all stuff like that. But that's the plugin store. All right, coming to the practical part of what we're trying to talk about. So this is a conversation that I had with ChatGPT a few weeks ago. First, I told it I am an architect and I have received a request for proposal from a client. One important thing about ChatGPT on the side note, Jitni usko forget about trying to move it's going to with its output. I sort of told it I want you to act as my RFP assistant, understanding the RFP or tender and answering the question you have about the RFP. I gave it a link, which is this. Now, this link. Is um, you go on AI .com and so you PDF. I can show you what the actual are you might recognize. But This is the RFP that we're talking about, if some of you recognize this. But this is an RFP that um, RCOP itself got by the Technical Cell EPC Mission Planning Department for context. And I asked it to first summarize what the RFP did for me. Now, basically, it knows everything about the RFP that it has to know. I asked it to give me a summary of page 45. And so it gave me that summary. I asked it for some meanings. It gave me those meanings. Now I'm going to try to ask it some tricky questions so that we can actually test its knowledge. So I didn't give it any page number. I just asked it to summarize the integrity pack for me, which was somewhere in that 150 page document. And within seconds, it was able to do so. Now the integrity pack wasn't within one page. It was within a number of pages but it gave me the exact page number for each of them. Then going further, I gave it a section and then I gave it a question. I have been talking to a constructor who seems to have violated a clause in this section. I will give you a description of the constructor's action. Your job is to verify whether they have violated anything or not. Certainly. And so 
I gave it a random clause that the constructor might have violated and then asked it, what has the constructor violated? And so it gave me every single section of what a construction might have violated, uh, violated in all of these different sections. Then I asked it, don't only check it for this section, check it for the entire document. And it gave me page 30, 31, 32, 97, all of the different pages. For more examples, I asked it for the evaluation process of the standard, and it gave me that process. To go further, I picked different costs that were associated with the project examples, and then I gave it those costs. And I asked it, can you calculate the total finances and build a financial bid? Do this step by step. After this, evaluate the total financial bid and draw conclusions on what costs can be cut down to prepare a more competitive and comprehensive bid. Do not make assumptions and ask clarifying questions along the way. So it calculated the total finances for all of that. It built a financial bid. It evaluated that financial bid. Asked me some clarifying questions. And then it sort of gave me different alternatives for things that I could improve in my pitch. So I can focus on cost efficiency, emphasize sustainability and compliance, all of these different things. And it then asked me, would you like a more detailed analysis on any of these? So I asked a detailed analysis on innovative design and technology solutions. And within the RFP, it told me specific points which I could focus on to get this goal right here. Then what I chose to do is, I chose to pick another RFP and tell it to compare with that RFP. And so it did the, that entire comparison and told me the differences between those RFPs. How this is helpful and in relevance to what we were told in the previous meeting, a lot of the RFPs are very detailed and a lot of the RFPs have very specific points that a lot of us miss out on. What this leads to is problems with the contractor, with the client and all of these different people. So you can use this tool to not go through that 150 page document by yourself, but ask that GPT to complement you with it. I personally have used this in all of my classes at UCLA and my workload has been reduced by 95%. Um, so definitely I would ask you guys to consider this. Yeah. Any questions about that? Any questions? So obviously you can use it to understand PDFs, compare to PDFs, clarify information, recheck information, and everything in between, of course. And here is something to have you guys easily do something uh, practically. You can sort of use this template if you want, and you want to be very specific with whatever you want it to do. So let's say you have a construction budget and you wanted to act as a construction specialist to look at it and tell you um, foundational options or like list of risk factors within the construction budget. So you can sort of tell it to act as a construction manager, suggest me list of risk factors in this construction budget, and you can give it that construction budget. And this is for cost um, to clarify the cost. It's about $20 per month and mul multiple users can use that. A little bit more about prompting and I'll quickly go through this. Um, obviously you wanna be as specific as possible, as I said. Um, if you want chat GPT to do something very specific, you should be specific and give it as much information as possible. I can show you what I mean. Um, so let's say that I want to read a document, but I don't only want to read it. I wanted to understand architecture lingo and different words for it to understand. So what I did was I went to the plugin list that was there. I selected AI PDF, which, which is what we're using to read those PDFs. And then I selected web requests, which is, if I give it a link, it can read anything on the web for me. And then I asked it, read the 
read this link right here for me. And this basically contains different architecture styles, designs, and visuals for it to understand and help you better. And I'll tell you what is happening right now as well. Because I wasn't specific, I got to tell it read this document using web requests plugin. And now it should be able to do that. Yep. And so it's sending a request to another software which is running on the site and it's going to communicate with it and it's going to give you an output. So this is what I mean by communicating with it properly. This URL is somehow blocked. So we're going to give it another URL. I searched a random link. Okay. And hopefully this works. Yep. And it knows everything about that specific website that we talked about. And so anything in a tender document now, it can understand and it can probably understand architecture size and which was even better than some of you here because it knows everything there is to know about architecture now. So stuff like this, you can incorporate. Another few terms that you can use to help you. There is a special button here, which is called custom instructions in chat GPT. When you go on that, you can sort of already tell it what to do whenever I talk to it. So here I've told it that when I use this specific word with a name here, I want you to reply this specific thing to me. So let's see what it actually does. We go on new chat and I use architect. And let's say we want to use one of your guys' names. What is your name? Shruti. Okay. So we'll give it that command. And then it should go to that function and draw it out. And it's Mr. because I gave it the Mr. wrong, but I should have been more careful with that. Yep. And it told me exactly what I told it in the custom instruction. How this might be useful, of course, this is a simplified version, but how this might be useful is let's say that I have a number of tasks that I do on a daily basis during my work time. I can tell it all of these different functions. Say that one of the tasks is make an email. And then I tell it a little bit about that email already in the custom stuff. It will already know what to do and you don't have to do all of that on your own. So there can be a number of functions. You can make 20, 30 different functions and it can do all of those daily tasks for you and reduce your workload. All right. And so I want to quickly say this again. Hey guys which you usually do repeatedly, it can be replaced by chat so that you get more time to do the unique stuff as an architect. Now, of course, a lot of this might not seem practical, but as you use chat CPD, you will actually explore more things and learn about it. All right. So now that was document processing. Do any of you have any questions about chat GPT? I can answer random questions as well. So why did you say 3.5 is 3.5? The version of chat GPT. Okay. So the 3.5 version is a free version. And so 
um, basically how chat GPT works is this is a bubble that chat GPT knows about. This is the data that it has access to. And so if you increase that data, it can draw better conclusions for you. How the basis of chat GPT is, let's say that so we want to complete this sentence. Hi, my name is Dash. What is the probability of the next word that comes, which is what chat GPT predicts? If I give you all the amount of probabilities that are coming in the next word, and let's say that hi, my name is Akshay, has the highest probability, that is what it's going to give you. So if I ask a pool, it will give me a better answer. Ke because it knows better probability. So in essence, 3.5 to 4 is the difference between 1x and 1,000x. OK. So that was document processing and chat GPT. Again, any questions? Or we can move further to generating AI, which is the visual part. Okay. And for generative AI, Unnati is going to tell you a little bit more about it. And we'll go over interiors first and then exteriors. And we've taken buildings and SketchUp files from Markov itself um, so that you get a, get a better idea. So we're starting with builders, and last time we came here, we we took we asked about the problem that you guys were facing with rendering and uh, time efficiency. So we found builders and files that there are two software that we're going to provide information about. So builders is basically an AI for rendering. It is not a proper rendering AI, but it will provide you the image, not the three D model. But it can provide you a visual picture of what you might want your design to look like. For example, you have you want to design a building, but you don't have the visual picture of what it will look like. If you, you know, you're thinking about some uh, material. You can also show the that. So it's basically that. Okay. So have anybody used Vedas here? Anybody aware of Vedas? Abhi, what, what um, rendering software does everybody use? SketchUp. Okay. And in, in general, how much time does it take for you to render something? At least? Okay. So, you're progressing in that direction. Got it. So, basically, Vedas can render any image for you in. Uh, about 10 seconds, yeah. um, according to the text that you give it. It's not going to be perfect, but it's helpful for brainstorming. Right. Okay. So these are the steps to download Vedas. Vedas is an app, uh, is an AI designed by Evolve Lab. So you will have to go to the Evolve Lab site. You will download the Vedas version. If you have Windows, you will download the Windows version. And similarly for Mac. And uh, then you will log in. Uh, and, uh, then you can, you have to yeah, you can just show it. Okay. Um, without further ado, I think we're going to show you how it looks like. Uh, this is this beta version. It is not going to be shorted, but it is giving an amazing result as it now. All right, so I guess, um, the interior part. Let's say you have a SketchUp file with an interior. How can you render that in a few seconds? So we'll sort of show you how the schedule file looked like and then the output as well so that you can compare. Yeah. 
So this is SketchUp. This is your design only. So this is extensions. Can you see? From here, you will add various. From uh, extensions manager, I have already added. So my various is here. This is how it's going to look like. This is the angle. You have to see the angle. It could be whatever view you want your design to look like. You will have to shift it. So, uh, angle and various is very, very important. Um, if you give it a good angle, then it's going to give you a good output. Um, otherwise, because it's a beta version, it can get confused at very complex angles as well. So this is an example of interior. So original design the these are some renders that I generated from various. This is this how it the, actually looked like. Yeah, this was the and the different renders were what you can generate by adding some prompts like the prompts and there are uh, you can adjust with the uh, interior thermometer atmosphere aerial view, which is basically used for exterior. But for interior, you don't have much. To do. You just have to put a prompt. I'm using SketchUp for about I the quality of renders is better in Lewis than in Arco. It is not practically understanding what you are telling it to do. You can try. It's very similar from that. Yeah. It's very prompting. It's more char features. What is your problem? This is better than this. Various. Quality of renders. In various. In various. Then. 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 Yeah, so these are some other AI uh, renders that we created. Yeah, so this is the prompt that I gave it. Um, so for the uh, interior, my prompt was craft an art deco inspired living room interior with modern touches. It is yours. Opt for soft colors. The ambience is cozy and warm lighting. Incorporate marble flooring and classical and classic comfortable furniture. So this is what I'm getting for this. On a side note, the really cool thing about prompts is that there is uh, another plugin in chat GPT which can make those prompts for you. So you don't even have to properly know how to write a prompt. Right. You can give it in any language and go <laughs> banana. So we think is when is there a way that we become more specific and become more professional and sophisticated then in the present for AI and also write their comfortable as yours. Well, yeah, I mean, the architectural terms they're not aware of, the technicalities they're not aware of, everything that you have. I, I will ask for help from the design team when I'm going to render, because I'm also not aware of those architectural terms that you guys are aware of. So that is a 
bonus for you guys, but I don't think a layman is will be able to handle setup for long. And there's like a lot of uh, tools that you can use to manipulate it as well, uh, which you will understand better than any layman. Yes. No, most of it is that is one downside of it. The only downside is that you cannot really render it because it is generating an image. It is not a yeah. Whereby, um, you can give us whatever prompt you gave. Yeah. Now you see that, okay, maybe uh, the color of the color of what I want it to be white, for example. Yeah. So, in the same, you can change the prompt and bring it or. You you yeah. will have you from then try another thing and then you will come you can add it in this prompt. It means and you can increase the prompt strength that you want the AI to focus on your prompt. It is a prompt strength is something that you wanted to generate a dynamic renders or you want it to be specific to what you have told it to. So that is a possibility for it. I, I, I think the question is rather apparently it can be iterated. Yeah. Yeah. One prompt more than the rest of the weeks. But it means that. You are able to change just one aspect of the image that goes. So, um, I so can generate a new form, but you go there and give the whole form and it keeps you. And this is the touch for to change. Okay. Yeah, I can answer that question. Um, so if you want to make major changes, then obviously you re prompt it, it regenerates that image. And usually, if the prompt is entirely same, but a few things have changed, it should change a few things and it should stay similar. Let's say that I only want to change the color of something. There is another software that we're going to talk about after this, which is called Adobe Firefly, if any of you have heard, which can make very small changes. So let's say he, I want to change the color of this flooring right here. Firefly can do that. I want to add a dog right here for some reason. Firefly can do that. If I want to change any small things, I want to add a table here, Firefly can do that. So stuff like that, small changes can be made. Can you make the presets in this? Like make a preset? Preset. Oh, in, in, preset. Or maybe uh, a preset, say, you know, uh, Indian wall. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then I add that, okay, this, this kind of lighting should be there, this kind of atmosphere should be there, this kind of wall 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 so it will give you those types of outputs. The more specific one you say about uh, presets. Like yeah. I make a certain preset for myself that okay, I like this style much yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, of course. Then why the same time next time to give prompts and I can just select that preset and then will do it. Yeah. Something like a filter. Yeah. <coughs> but is there a way to edit it then there? No. That is one downside of uh, various that we actually can. Uh, considered is that once the image has been made, um, you cannot edit it within this image. Like you can't say he, uh, um, everything else stays same. I only want like a dot right here. You can't do something like that. And that's why we considered another software. Right. 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 Is there a possibility that I can use chat GPT to create some code and then just incorporate it just to, to create you? Is there, is there something I know? Like a combination of technically, maybe it's up to you. I don't think that there will be, be a proper interface for that, but um, it can be done using like uh, connection apps like Zapier or uh, any API connection apps as well. But you have to use back end coding. Uh, on an interface new by but then again this is this was launched a few months ago within the next few months you can expect exponential changes and something like that might be important because that makes sense okay. so we move into exteriors now all right now we have a look at exteriors and this is um the indoor project um, which Arkov worked on. And so we were trying to 
give different options for it and try to replicate what the actual output was that you presented in the lower project. How can we come as close to that? And some of these seem pretty close, but even if it doesn't give you a very, very close output, it can definitely help in brainstorming because this is being done in a matter of seven, eight seconds. Yeah. We are like, like, from this it created that. So you can play with different angles. You can zoom in, zoom out. I have zoomed in and now I'm generating it. So zoom in the different output are there. This is pretty similar to what the actual output was. And so that's exteriors with rails. Any questions about exteriors or any thoughts about it? Uh, you were telling something about the fire fire. Mm -hmm. software. Oh, so it's possible that if I'm uploading any render, and I go for another time, like if I just, like I'm going to ask about the exterior, you need to worry about the exterior. If I want to change the scenario or the weather or anything like that, that's, that's also possible. A pipeline will be Basically, Samalo, this is another one of the Arcos exteriors that we got. If I want the my Yapa Lake Lagadu, Yapa Sar Gadiaja, Yapa New Road Aja, Sun Aja, one of them, all can be done through Fireplan. So these can be combined together to give better outputs. This was the original output. This was the original output that I had. And so different city views. You can uh, play with night. Uh, Day, daylight, nightlight. We can take city. All right. Uh, so now we move on to Firefly. I think before the instructions, we can show you directly how it works, and then we can sort of show you the thing. And this presentation will be sent in to all of you so that you can refer to the instructions as well. So first we'll go to Firefly Interiors. And this is from the Max project that uh, a lot of you might have worked on. And these are the small changes that you can do. But, oh, I should know this one. And how it works is pretty simple. You just use a paintbrush to select the area that you want to change. You just and mask that area. That. And then you 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 have to put a prompt or a text and it will do it. The catch here is that in Paris, you want to be very specific. In Firefly, you want to be as short as possible because it understands shorter prompts better. Yeah, this was the original design, which was masked, and then. It and so, if I want to add, let's say a shower cabinet or a view, all of that can be done very, very easily. We just I I mask. Really simple as for mask around nine view. Yeah, that's it. I want the city view from a window. That's it. Now we moving to exterior now. Now showing you some examples of the exteriors. So this is, I think the indoor one only. No, this is the city one. Oh, this is the second one from Rares recorded here. And so we're making edits to that. This is the rendered image that I took from uh, Venus, and now I am masking it. I was trying to enhance it. There's nothing much to enhance, but I wanted to add yachts there and wanted to remove the vegetation also. Oh, and you can add in some tags as well. If you don't want this to be there, you can remove that. You can remove also. 
basically added the ocean there now i'm masking this area because i don't want the vegetation i have added ocean there also i i'm i'm going to add more roads also you can see And so I think it's a hit and trial process where if you like something, you choose that. Just skip for all build for all, then you can subtract that if you want. We wanted to add roads here instead of the sea. We simply wrote roads. This is another example of the indoor project. Sometimes it's a little funny, I'll tell you that. He wanted to add the sky. He added this. He wanted to add roads here in the vegetation. So we're trying this. And then you can also keep one uh, one of the four images that it has generated, and then you can regenerate it so that you know you you're giving it a sense that okay, this is this is but this is all thing. You can keep that one, then prompt it again, and it will generate better. I've done it here. Yeah, the scale that is the forest way there will be the scale of the two i think i i don't think there's an option with telling it what scale that is uh, but i think it's uh, when we saw different examples we saw that for every one of them it was giving different scales for it to also understand which scale we were thinking about so if any one of the scales is actually the scale you want to go with you select that and then re enter it on that so that you get a better so we settled on this oversight. Correct. Building in the background. Correct. So you can select that road again. Once you, you select that oversize road, you would say add, it adds that road there. Then you select it again and say, I want to remove this part of the road. I select that part of the road and I remove it. So it's like it's a two-way process. Not only it's gonna not gonna give you the best outcome. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I think so. Yeah. That that can be done. Okay. Any questions about Varus or Firefly? Firefly. Yeah. Firefly is free. And make journey now, but love it's not based for architecture, so it, it doesn't understand it as well. Um, and uske andar, wo back and forth wala process achche se hota nahi. Wo thodi, uh, it gives very fantasy type images which architects would have wanted. All right, yeah. And just a side note, angle placement is very important in Vader specifically. The angle that you give it, that quality of image it will get. So you can try out different angles if you would like. And Vader is about 
four hundred dollars for twenty five accounts. Not that it's. Okay, so five ply for five ply it is three four now, but we don't know about it. Uh, I we would expect five ply to cost something in the coming months. Right now, I think they're just testing stuff out, so it's free. Uh, make the best out of that, yeah. but it should cost something. Um, because an application like this is really valuable. It can be used for a lot of things. So for uh, for Firefly, you have to go to the Firefly site. You have to log in, and then you can uh, drop an image and start masking it and uh, generating whatever you want or changing however you want it. So. And uh, you can, uh, as I told you, it's not online. Yeah, it's not online. They don't have an app for now. For That's and this is basically everything that we already told you guys, but for the presentation, we can send this to you as well. Again, be very specific about proms, the shorter the better for fire plants. All right, a little bit about presentation, how you can improve. Um, pitches and presentations that you give to clients and it's super easy but I think it makes a big change uh, even something like what happened right now do it, any of you know how to do this by show of hands correct so you can use a simple tool called morph which basically connects two images together and it automatically does this transition for you another example of morph is something like this so let's say instead of this blob right here, I had a building and I wanted to zoom into that. Something like that, that can be done using animations and morph transition. An example of what morph is. Let's say I have this and then I want to go here. All I did was go to transitions, hit morph, and it did everything for me. Simple as that. You can. Anything that is so the the key is ye jo five has to be in the other slide as well. So that's what I'm saying. Yes. The key is instead of creating two separate slides, you want to duplicate this. Once you duplicate it, that it knows the address of that file. So we'll just switch that size. Another example of um, that was more. Another example of animations is let's say that in PowerPoint I've asked whenever I hit the purple button, I want it to become purple. And if I want to hit the blue button, it will become blue. This is all very, also very simple. Um, you just go to animations. There is an add animation button right here. What you want to do is you add animation and you, for this specific thing that I talked about, you fill a color. And so it knows um, in, I selected this. So if I want to fill the color of, let's say green, so it'll turn that to green. And you can, of course, play around with these different animations, but um, it can make, this is very simple, but it can make very, very complex animations, which are super useful. Um, so you can sort of have different buildings playing around with them, zooming into some, removing some of them, all of that can be done. And finally, a little bit about 3D objects. Just an example. Now, this is obviously not very subtle, but imagine if you had a 3D object just rotating while 
the person who's pitching tells the client a little bit about it. I can obviously use animations to say that if I click on this specific window, it zooms into that window. All of that can also be done. In this specific 3D object, how I animated it was when I touch it, it's going to remove, it's going to go that way as well. Of course, not very subtle, but it can be done in a lot of ways. Another animation that I put was once I want to go to the next slide, it just floats its way out of there. And so obviously this is free, but if you want to get into very, very complex animations, that's the cause. And we added some more AI apps that you can use. These are just the most important ones that we wanted to get into, but these are different AI applications. Um, there's obviously how in rendering we use various, how we talked about Arco, that's also here. You can use different ones with them for different things. The format of the animation? Uh, in which animation? No, it's a 3D object. So it's yeah. I I just imported a 3D object from PowerPoint's library itself, but any 3D object. But you can, if you have the same extension for a 3D object that you create, you can import that into this, and it can do the same. So what is the support? Be one of. Uh, OBC or yeah, SolidWorks or yeah, Blender may could use over the same over. And so I guess that's it about a few things that you can incorporate into your architecture journey um, to get better in architecture. I can say this very, very confidently that people who will learn how to incorporate AI into their industries early on, which is this time right now, will be the ones who will be leading industry. Because if we look at the trends that are happening right now, within the last five months, chat GPT has beaten human beings in every type of test, which is like tests which requires written application and which requires a lot of things that can be learned. It is doing better than you. And if it can do that, something like that in five months, within the next five to 10 years, um, you don't want to be replaced by AI. So you want to incorporate that into your system. Um, any questions about any of that? Any thoughts about any of that? Did you guys find it useful? Um, do you think it'll take some time to getting used to any thoughts about it? Any courses? Yeah. Um, honestly, I think using, if you want to understand the back end of AI, which wouldn't be too useful um, in practical architecture, you can take some courses. But using these different AI applications, I don't think they have any courses. It's just simple YouTube videos that we learned as well from. Um, because usually what happens in AI is um, there's how to construct AI and there's how to use AI. Construction of AI may courses hai, but uh, none of that is useful. Using AI may koi course nahi hai, but what is that is useful. So just separately searching mid journey, how to learn mid journey on YouTube, free courses. Yeah. But if there's no questions, I guess that was that. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, this is a start of my journey as well. I, I'm doing this professionally at UCLA as well. We're working with a lot of companies to integrate AI into their uh, workflow. And I hope it was useful. Even if it was not, um, just come to me separately if you want to have any reviews. I'm open. I'm younger than all of you, so I would be all ears to hear whatever you guys have to say. Uh, but with that, thank you. Can we get a picture with everyone? Yeah. The better, better.
Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. 